The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Oh, well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, thank you for being with me this evening. Uh, and it's good morning to our friends in the lands down under, uh, and good afternoon if you're across the ditch uh, in the land of the long white cloud. That would be New Zealand, of course. Okay, so I can tell you, folks, it's the most glorious day down here. Um, how are you hearing me, incidentally? Somebody please type in the question box. Here we are. Oh, Dave, he's the first. He was the, the last week, too. Good to hear. You can hear me all right. Uh, that's great. So um, it's a glorious day down under. Uh, Larry, good to have you with us. Welcome. Uh, and um, boy, uh, springtime uh, at uh, Queensland's Gold Coast. Uh, what could be better? Uh, we have... Uh, sunshine, we have blue water as far as you can see, uh, and we have, uh, praise the Lord, uh, no COVID. Uh, this state has been uh, COVID free now for a very, very considerable time. Uh, and we had uh, a lockdown uh, last year, we had a two week lockdown uh, earlier this year, and that's it. Um, and uh, uh, we were uh, just blessed to be spared because if you uh, see what's happening further south, uh, New South Wales and Victoria. Uh, they are in a total mess. Uh, and we have this complete division, of course, like most things these days. Uh, if anyone has an opinion, there'll be plenty to say rubbish. Uh, so we have um, the complete dichotomy between uh, people who are uh, supporting the governments that are keeping borders closed um, and those who uh, uh, defy them, uh, won't wear their masks if they're asked to, uh, won't uh, uh, stay at home if they're asked to, but I know uh, the vast majority of you uh, live either in the States or Canada um, and it would be very strange to you to uh, hear that. but. Uh, Honestly, um, apart from the fact that we can't go into New South Wales, well, we can, but if we do, we've got to do a 14-day quarantine in a government-managed hotel on your return, uh, usually one with no windows and no balcony, so it's not, it's not a great option. Um, uh, but uh, apart from the fact that you can't uh, uh, see your friends, relatives and loved ones across the border, um, uh, things in Queensland uh, are pretty fine if you're lucky enough to live here, um, I think. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's uh, move on and see all the people we've got with us today. Great to have you here, Andrew, of course, Anthony down in New South Wales. Dave, of course, he's a tutorial guy. Uh, uh, Doug's with us. Uh, Gloria, uh, Gloria's with us. Hello, Gloria. Uh, George, good to have you here. Uh, Greg, uh, uh, over in... Uh, California. Uh, his name is uh, Greg Palladini um, and he's a most interesting character that you're going to hear a lot more of today. Um, he's a... Uh, uh, Greg became a member of the Daniel Code in about mid-2015 uh, and he actually came to a Daniel Code tutorial um, in El Segundo, California um, in uh, 2016. Uh, but at that stage I was only tr uh, teaching uh, trading price um, and uh, since then of course I've uh, uh, seen enough of the Daniel Code and learnt enough that I'm able to uh, define the time cycle so well that we can actually now trade purely off time signals as well and that's been the great revolution. Uh, although uh, everything about the Daniel Code is a revolution but you're going to hear more about Greg Palladini as we go along. Uh, Hank's uh, with us uh, down in uh, the Hunter Valley. Uh, Hank, great to have you with us, mate. Uh, I hope you've got some good weather down there. Uh, Jeff's with us. Good to have you with us. Uh, let's see, oh, lots of people. Larry, of course, I've said hello to. Uh, Mark, of course, Martin. Uh, the Murph, the legendary Murphy. Um, <laughs> good to have you with us, mate. Um, I spent a long time over the uh, holiday weekend um, uh, we lost um, one of our pups, um, well, she was an ancient lady by the time we lost her, uh, Mina, who was a um, uh, 
uh, we, we brought her over with us from New Zealand. She's a um, Kelpie Hunterway Cross, um, and Kelpies, of course, are the main Australian uh, sheepdog, and the Hunterways are the main New Zealand sheepdogs. They're a bigger, stronger type of dog because they use them a lot on the hilly country um, in New Zealand. Um, and uh, dear old Mina, we lost her um, a number of months ago. Um, and I think she was about 16, 15 or 16 years old. So uh, we were lucky to have her. She was a wonder. Um, anyway, um, Mrs. Needham has been uh, unhappy um, since we've lost Mina and uh, looked at, I guess, uh, thousands of uh, dog pictures at uh, the RSPCA and what have you. Um, and on uh, Friday, she came up with the idea of, uh, I, found a, uh, I found a puppy that I want. I said, great, I'll, I'll go and get it for you. Where is it? She said, uh, <laughs> it's up in Mackay. <coughs> now, if you're not from this part of the world, you won't know what that means. But uh, basically, uh, Mackay is a, a beautiful, magnificent tourist town. It's the gateway to the Great Barrier Reef, one of the seven wonders of the world. Great playground for Australians. Um, and uh, But it's about uh, 680 uh, miles, uh, 1,039 kilometres, I can tell you, but to, to put that language most of you will understand, 630 or 640 odd miles. Now, uh, the... Uh, so uh, <laughs> how am I going to get this dog down here? Well, we've got our airlines so restricted at the moment with uh, no um, interstate or international uh, travellers. So um, I knew that Monday was uh, a holiday for uh, Labor Day um, in the States. And uh, I said, well, you're in great luck. I've uh, got a market holiday on Monday. I'll, I'll, I'll drive up and, uh, and uh, collect the pup. So... Um, I took off at about uh, half past 11 on Friday. Now, bear in mind when I'm telling you this story that uh, we do not have these most magnificent interstates in Australia. Um, in fact, the uh, good road going north from here runs out at Champion. When I say runs out, uh, I mean the motorway runs out and you're on to. This is, uh, inter this is National Route 1, uh, the uh, old Pacific Highway. Um, and uh, for National Route 1, it's a total embarrassment north of Kempsey uh, because it's uh, literally a uh, two-lane uh, country road, uh, by which I mean one, right, one, one lane going one way and one lane going the other way, and that's it. Uh, so I got in. I left here at uh, 11.30 uh, in the morning, um, and I uh, eventually got to my uh, motel for the night um, at half past nine at night. Uh, next morning, um, I was up early and uh, made the next leg, which was uh, four hours uh, from uh, Rockhampton, uh, where I'd spent the night up to uh, Mackay. Um, I went and saw the pup, um, who was much larger than I expected. Uh, but anyway, um, they said, would you like to see some smaller ones? I said, no. Uh, Mrs. Needham, uh, she who must be obeyed, has chosen this one. There'll be a reason. So uh, um, I'll come and pick her up tomorrow morning. So the next morning I picked her up at uh, about quarter past eight in the morning. Uh, the RSPCA, which is the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, uh, we all, everyone has these sort of uh, uh, guardians of the animals um, by different names, uh, but uh, they were kind enough to open up uh, early, or let me in early at least, so I picked up uh, the new pup at... Um, 8.15 in the morning, um, and I got back to uh, Tally, Queensland at about um, half past nine at night. So uh, 13 hours, straight shot. And <laughs> that, was, that was my Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and uh, recovery and do charts on, on Sunday night and Monday. Uh, so there you are. So I've seen uh, a bit more of this uh, wonderful country, uh, and uh, it, it's an uh, absolute privilege that we can drive around those big distances um, and see everything. It's all quite wonderful. Uh, anyway, uh, continuing, Mark's with us. Uh, Mark L's with us as well. Uh, that's great. Martin's with us. Uh, good to have you with us, mate. Lots of people still coming in. Uh, uh, Mike uh, M, the uh, dentist from Chicago, is with us. He's, uh, he's been with us a long time. Uh, he might even have come to that 2016 tutorial if I remember, of course, uh, the Murph, I said. Uh, Miles, nice to have you with us, Miles. Uh, Nathan, 
of course, and Ed, Peter Mack, he's the uh, short-term trading guru. Uh, uh, another few Peters, Scott, uh, Stevens, uh, more Stevens, uh, Todd is with us, and Trevor's with us. Uh, and uh, there are more people coming in, of course, all the time. Dakshay's just arrived. Uh, great if to have you with us, all of you folks. And uh, Benjamin uh, has just arrived as well. Good to have you all with us. Okay, so um, let's move on. Um, I've... Um, uh, told you the story about my weekend. Uh, let's uh, start thinking now um, uh, about markets. Uh, so here we are. Don't want to do that. We want to move on to another slide. And here we are. So um, I'll wait till this changes for you. There it is. So uh, you've seen this before. I'm talking here about the priorities of trading. Um, and you can see the second item there is learn a good trading system with proven results. Um, and the last uh, few weeks, uh, trading has just been extraordinarily fantastic. It's just uh, excelled itself. And of course, uh, the Daniel Coates managed to catch uh, all of those moves. Um, in fact, uh, uh, as you'll see, uh, probably twice in the last uh, uh, month or so, um, We've run out of signals. In other words, we've caught every single turn um, in the um, 32 uh, markets that we cover in Forex and Futures. Uh, so uh, what we have to do for you folks is uh, give you as much of the gift as we can uh, to help you with your trading, uh, to make you successful traders, uh, so uh, for the benefit of yourselves and your families. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Uh, trading if you can find a good trading system and most most of you have most of you can do that bit of it on your own but uh, uh, the business of trading uh, we talk I talk often about um, how good our signals are and how correct they are but uh, that's not really the business of trading the business of trading is making money it's that simple uh, that's what we do and the more money we make the more uh, successful we are so uh, futures and forex uh, are an amazing gift and they're, they're a gift of joy um, and I know a lot of you are very nervous about your trading or have uh, uh, apprehensions about it uh, you know uh, to me it's a source of absolute joy uh, I've been doing this for a very very long time uh, in fact I started finding the Daniel Code uh, bits and pieces of it probably uh, 30 years ago um, and uh, uh, as I say, I got uh, the first part of it I found. I got terribly excited and I uh, ran downstairs and uh, said to Mrs. Needham, um, Eureka, I have it. Uh, this is it. This is the silver key, which uh, of course it wasn't. It was just a thread. And uh, uh, as you pull on a thread, it starts to unravel and you see a bit more of the pattern and a bit more and a bit more. So, uh, But it's been a labor of love for 30 years or more. Um, and uh, it's it's gives me absolute joy every morning to see that the markets have turned where we thought they would, that there's uh, more money in the accounts. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing if you can get it right. Um, and the Daniel Code um, takes you to the next level. So um, if you're trading futures and forex, it's that incredible leverage in the futures and forex uh, that is so attractive and so profitable if you get it right. So past a good trading system, the next thing you really need to do is learn the Daniel Code uh, because it is different to anything you've ever seen or heard of before. So uh, I, like you, uh, there was a long period in my life where I thought uh, you could learn trading. Uh, being an attorney, I thought like learning the law, you uh, would read books, you'd uh, read examples, you'd have some practical experience. Um, and you'd eventually uh, learn the law. And uh, uh, I thought you could do the same thing with trading. So um, I spent a not so small fortune on books, uh, the various gurus of the time, uh, websites. I'm sure you all have done something like that. And um, uh, nothing worked uh, for me personally. I'm not saying that these uh, other uh, people in the industry aren't uh, worthwhile. Some of them are very, very worthwhile. Uh, unfortunately, uh, a whole lot of them aren't. Uh, but I went down that route of uh, books and gurus and websites, and uh, uh, eventually um, uh, I was uh, forced to find the Daniel Code. Uh, I was spending so much time uh, trading and trying to learn uh, 
uh, what markets do and what really makes them turn eventually. I got to the stage that I said uh, to my wife, um, I'm spending so much time uh, on trading, it's really not fair to my partners uh, in the law practice, which I uh, still had at that stage in North Sydney. Uh, and uh, I've really got to work out what makes markets turn. And if I can't, I've got to stop wasting time and money and uh, get on with the uh, practice of the law. Uh, so um, uh, I sat there for three months uh, looking at uh, charts. Um, and I finished up, I had... Uh, bone growth on my elbows from leaning forward looking at these charts so often for so long and eventually I start to find the Daniel Code. So the, because the Daniel Code is totally unlike anything you've ever seen or heard of in the trading world, it's entirely different in, in the results it gives you and what triggers these uh, market turns. Uh, and it provides two distinct types of trading. Uh, as well as the other discipline. Trading price signals is the traditional method, although nothing in the Daniel Code is really traditional. Uh, the next trading universe is trading time, uh, and that is a totally different experience. So if you start off by looking at trading price, which is what I've been uh, teaching since uh, 2008, uh, it involves issues of momentum, corrections, variations of patterns, uh, volume, range, you keep keep thinking of more things. Some of these can be measured and uh, you can therefore find them useful uh, with relatively simple tools uh, like stochastics uh, and there's many, many of these indicators, hundreds and hundreds of them. Uh, but uh, they're all different, they all have different settings on them um, and uh, uh, they don't always tell you uh, the truth. Uh, they tell you the truth as the market created it, uh, but they're not telling you the truth about what the probabilities are for tomorrow. Um, so what does not vary, and it's totally unique in the trading world, is that markets turn at and only at the Daniel Code numbers. Uh, these I create twice a week, uh, more often if necessary, uh, and uh, we cover 15 Forex markets and 17 Futures markets. Read that again. Markets turn at and only at the Daniel Code price ratios. So uh, for proof of this proposition, you don't have to believe me. I never say anything that I can't prove. Uh, I've been an attorney for uh, close to 40 years. Uh, whatever statements you make have to be supported by the evidence. Understand that well. Um, and I don't ask you to accept anything I say, but uh, if you go to the Daniel Code website, you'll see we have a link to chart archives. And uh, in those archives are over 45 members' charts uh, that I've created since late 2008 uh, when this website first went public. Uh, they're free to review. I invite you to do so. Uh, you'll be very hard-pressed to find a market that has ever turned anywhere except at the Daniel Code numbers, which are the members' charts that we create and post on this website for you. Uh, for the markets that we don't actually post charts for, uh, we do have charts, and I monitor them for you. Um, and those signals, if it's uh, if one of those charts is creating signals, they go into your TO3 or TO3 plus uh, signals. And um, a lot of people um, get very frightened of markets, um, uh, and particularly they get frightened about numbers. You don't need to be. Quite frankly, I know I know people get freaked out by numbers, uh, but don't worry about that. We do all of that work for you. If you can count to three and tell red from blue, uh, I can make you a superstar. So uh, this is sort of kind of a magic and mystical world that uh, the, the, the Daniel Code provides. Uh, these numbers, they're created from secret ancient ratios, and I started finding them more than 30 years ago. So if this sounds magical and mysterious, uh, it is. Um, it is really. Uh, and no one is more amazed by the Daniel Code uh, than I am. And uh, I've been living with this day and night, as I say, for a very, very long time. Uh, but uh, it's really interesting that although the Daniel Code ratios that we're using come from a totally different source. They match the natural rhythms and ratios created by our own planet and the solar system. Um, and it's quite, it's quite staggering. Um, and uh, Daniel Code price ratios are actually the Daniel Code time ratios. Daniel Code itself is a timing mechanism. 
um, and we obtain our price levels from the DC uh, time cycles and we use them to delineate price. So you might think that's a bit weird, but probably the hardest thing for folks to accept is that time and price in markets are actually the same thing on different axes. Uh, and I know that's uh, uh, you know a headful to get get around, but <coughs> that's, that that happens because the Daniel Code numbers um, are created by the markets themselves, uh, and it's pretty extraordinary. So uh, beyond trading price, the next universe, and it is a step up to a different universe, is trading time signals. And what we've been able to create in the Daniel Code is a whole suite of time signals that are created by markets themselves uh, regardless of uh, the price levels at which those markets are trading um, and uh, it's the time signals that are the great uh, the great new discovery uh, as as great in their own way as uh, my finding the original daniel code price ratios the time is the next universe it's the next step up uh, and that's what i teach you at tutorials you won't find anything about uh, trading time on the Daniel Code website, <coughs> although <coughs> the TO3 and PLUS signals have an element of time in it. Uh, there's no disclosure or discussion about that. If you're interested in learning about trading time, uh, then you need to do a Daniel Code a tutorial. Um, and honestly, that's the greatest gift I can give you. Uh, and it's the greatest gift you can give anyone else, uh, your children, your friends, what have you. Uh, once you can understand how to trade Daniel Code time, you never have to worry about anything else in your life. It's joyful all the way. Um, and um, uh, the old saying, uh, advanced technology appear uh, to primitive people as magic. Uh, but I have a much more important question. Uh, how did a mere man measure the rotational speed of the Earth, the length of its rotation around our sun, the time of lunar cycles, including apogees and perigees, and hence the vibration of all things, and do this 2,500 years ago. Uh, for those of you who don't know and don't understand, um, I'm not going to um, enhance on that other than say um, it's, uh, it, it, it's miraculous stuff, and it really is. Uh, so uh, I'm going to just take you back through what's been happening uh, with our trading in the last uh, few weeks. Um, and uh, this is a post I put on forum um, where for the second time um, uh, in August, uh, we found ourselves with zero Forex signals and only a, a couple of future signals. Uh, the simple reason was uh, we picked every turn uh, on every market that we cover. And, <laughs> and that was the second time uh, in a month or so uh, that we'd done that. Um, and uh, then I give you a bit more information on it down below. Uh, but uh, it has been an extraordinary period of trading. Now, you're not going to get this all the time. Volatility are like waves. They come and they go. Volatility comes and volatility goes. The good news is, though, that some markets are always experiencing volatility. And it's that volatility that gives you the big bucks. Uh, so that's why uh, we talk about trading a lot of um, a number of markets. Um, and uh, if one is not um, uh, trending, is not, uh, if it's in a consolidation pattern, leave it. Go and trade another one. That's why we have them there. The, so many people get tied down to um, a particular uh, a particular market. Um, the vast majority of people that, uh, that come to me say, I want to trade uh, S&P minis and gold. Why? You want to trade them because they're the ones you know, but they're not always the best market to trade. There are many, many other markets, and they're all great in their time. And that time is when markets are trending. And target market uh, market selection is a vital, vital part uh, of your trading suite. Don't trade uh, dead markets. Trade active, vibrant markets. That's where the money is. Um, so we're going through an extraordinary uh, period at the moment. 
uh, with uh, this particular gentleman, uh, Greg Palladini. Um, and uh, it's extraordinary uh, because he's been kind enough and generous enough uh, to uh, share with us um, some of the research he's doing uh, as he's going through doing his Daniel Code tutorial. Uh, so as I told you, Greg's been with us since about mid-2015 um, and a uh, long-term member, isn't he? Um, and uh, he came to a tutorial um, in uh, El Segundo, California in 2016. But at that stage, uh, I was only teaching price. I hadn't then discovered the miracle of trading time, which is part of the same Daniel Code miracle. It's all the same thing. Uh, all of these ratios are totally universal, but I hadn't discovered it enough to, and confidently enough to be teaching it, which, uh, of course, I've now been doing for the last two, two or maybe three years. Um, and um, Greg is a, a very, very experienced trader. Um, he's also a wealth fund manager. Um, he knows all about markets um, and he's highly competent. Um, and he's doing his second Daniel Code tutorial primarily for him learning about trading Daniel Code time signals, about creating the signals and trading them. And he's been kind enough to say, um, I'm going to share some of my research with you. Um, and uh, a few weeks ago, uh, we got on August the 25th, you can see at the top of this uh, screen, um, he told us what he'd been uh, learning uh, as he started working up on trading Daniel Code time signals initially on Forex. He's primarily a Forex trader. Um, and uh, he's been kind enough to give us his results and uh, share them with us. Um, and uh, as he says, um, uh, he's a, a gentleman who knows all about trading. I, I would suggest that there's nothing uh, in the trading world that Greg hasn't seen. Um, he's it's very, very experienced. Um, and um, uh, uh, what he says is that, um, uh, amongst others, uh, uh, it becomes clear, coming clear to me that trading time signals in a mechanical fashion takes the emotion out, which allows for that confidence to trade consistently. Um, and, and that's just a huge uh, point of some of that. Uh, it's quite uh, great, isn't it? Okay, so let's uh, move on because... Um, in uh, September, the, on September the 4th, uh, Greg was kind enough to post another uh, report on what he's discovering with his trading. Um, and uh, what he's doing um, is um, he's exploring uh, the Daniel Code. I've taught it to him, trading time, creating the signals and trading time. And he's now exploring the optimum uh, uh, positioning of his stop loss management to maximize profit. Uh, and as you can see, it's uh, quite extraordinary. In fact, as Greg says, uh, the profits over this period were phenomenal. Um, and he goes on to give them to you and the small number of losing trades. Um, and uh, one of the points he makes, of course, is that um, uh, doing the Daniel Kerr tutorial is quite expensive. Um, and uh, he makes the point that he's uh, uh, pretty well paid for it already um, in a few weeks. Uh, but he's, he's, what he's researching here is uh, what the difference between manipulating your stop losses now. With the Daniel Kerr tutorial, I teach you uh, a very, relatively speaking, a very tight stop loss. Um, Greg, in, this, in this, uh, these two uh, particular uh, posts in, in, in Members Forum, he's exploring different types of stop loss management. Now, uh, the point is that um, you can't um, have uh, enhanced reward without enhanced risk. The only way of getting uh, bigger returns is to take on bigger risk. Um, so I had a couple of guys uh, write to me saying, you know, uh, Greg's talked about $75,000 being required and uh, they got scared about that. So uh, the reality is that most of our tutorial guys start by trading a few thousand dollars. Uh, the vast majority of them start by trading using a bank of 10,000 or less. So uh, understand, please, that what Greg is talking about is optimizing return. Uh, but to optimize return, you also take on additional risk. Um, and um, uh, don't let that frighten you, because if you do a Daniel Code tutorial, you can start off trading micro contracts for a few thousand dollars. 
uh, in your um, uh, margin account uh, and then you can uh, progress as you make those profits or you might want to start with the bigger bank entirely up to you your own uh, circumstances and your own levels of confidence uh, but uh, I'm most grateful to Greg and uh, you should be too that he's uh, had the uh, courage and kindness uh, to share uh, what he's uh, discovering uh, with you and uh, delighted to have such a such a uh, high quality trader doing this uh, work um, and exploring trading time signals uh, on uh, Forex he's going to uh, here we are what we two Greg just written to me that's the advantage of Forex as you can throttle down to micro contracts here as you strongly recommended one bar stop for all those except those very experienced quite right uh, that's from Greg himself uh, thank you very much mate uh, I hope you're having a great day over there I wish you were here it's uh, absolutely glorious early spring uh, of course short sleeves short sleeves here nearly all the time uh, we have uh, probably about 10 or 12 days over winter that uh, maybe maybe even a month uh, where you need a light uh, a jumper or sweater uh, but uh, it is so glorious here Greg and the markets are being so generous to it uh, and the new pup uh, seems to be sleeping through the night already uh, so uh, we're uh, very happy okay so uh, if you want to be a super trader if you want to do the Daniel Code tutorial uh, email me jneedham at the danielcode.com um, and I'll uh, send you some uh, information, written information. Uh, if you'd like me to call you uh, to discuss the tutorial or your trading, um, let me have your phone number, email me. Let me know your time zone so I don't try to call you in the middle of the night. Um, and we have clients from all the way from never seen a chart. Uh, Frank DB, who's um, a super trader now, of course, uh, and writes the fourth seal commentary for us um, when he came to me uh, back in 2011 uh, the first thing he said was I've never seen a financial chart I know nothing about finance uh, and uh, uh, I taught him and I have taught many people who've never seen a chart before uh, and in fact they make the best traders because they haven't you haven't got to go through that battle of getting rid of everything that uh, they think they know uh, which interferes with the Daniel Code because it is so different and so unique. Uh, and uh, if you're a good trader, uh, if you're a seriously good trader even, uh, as is uh, Greg, um, then uh, we'll make you better. Uh, Daniel Code time trading is the next universe. To me and for me, I guess it's going to be the final universe, but it is absolutely fantastic. Uh, let me know if you'd like to uh, learn about that. Uh, in the meantime, let us uh, move on uh, to the US dollar, uh, the shrinking US dollar. Now, this uh, chart that you're looking at is an angular chart. It's basically the start of a fourth seal chart. So uh, we create these um, angles. Uh, and angles, of course, are, are very, very interesting things because any, any point on a line that is an angle uh, has qualities of both time and price. Uh, and what's been happening with this US dollar and you've seen this chart before over the years I do show these longer term charts to you periodically this is a 24 day chart that means that each single bar on this chart is 24 trading days long um, and look at this incredible recognition of support uh, uh, this uh, these blue lines you see this is a, a Daniel Code trading channel and it started back in April 2008 uh, and once it's found the first two spots uh, two points it doesn't change but look what's been happening here you've had uh, this support uh, found in uh, June 2010 uh, February 2014 uh, and uh, again uh, in October uh, 2000, September October uh, 2017 at the line the, the light blue line that's one standard deviation below the mean and the thicker blue line <coughs> running in the middle of all these light blue, all these blue lines that's the median or the mean um, and uh, this uh, Daniel Code trading channel expands by one or more standard deviations from the mean <coughs> now <coughs> these are not the normal mathematical standard deviations <coughs> that you learned about in school 
<coughs> these are Daniel Code standard deviations. They're not one. They're at one of the Daniel Code ratios. So essentially from the median, uh, you go up one standard deviation, then two standard deviations, the same coming down from the thicker blue line, go down one standard deviation, two standard deviations. Uh, and you can see at the date around about uh, December the 15th, but it's a bit later than that, isn't it? It's going to be maybe uh, February, March 16th. Uh, that we had target recognition and support at the median. And from that, uh, this uh, contract rallied again, uh, made a, uh, another new high, and down it went. And this time, it crashed straight through the median, and it went down to find support, one standard deviation below the mean. From there, it rallied up, it tried to regain the mean, that's what it does. It tries to get back to the median uh, and it uh, got there but couldn't hold it there, never actually got its closes above it. Um, and then it started to run down and it broke uh, the uh, light blue line, which then becomes the red dotted line, one standard deviation below the mean. So it lost that support and that's the first time uh, since 2010 uh, that it lost that support. Very important. You've seen this chart before. And that's what's causing all a lot of the drama, uh, is the uh, US dollar trying to find a new support base. Uh, but that, of course, um, which is the whole point uh, of this webinar, gives us a whole lot of opportunities. Now, remember we're looking at 24-day charts here. Uh, you should be looking at this on the same basis for your daily charts and your six-day charts. That's a chart where every bar is six days. But these are longer-term charts, just to show you how it's done. Otherwise, we'd be here forever, uh, which, of course, would be lovely if all of us had that uh, time. Uh, so uh, have a look at uh, what we've got here. So on the top pane, we've got the US dollar uh, index, DX. Um, and in the bottom pane, we've got gold. This is the futures contract. Uh, but uh, it, it, it shows you exactly what I want you to understand. You can see there are two sections there that I've marked uh, in a pinky looking triangle. Those are the times when gold has been inversely correlated with the US dollar. In other words, dollar up, gold down. Dollar down, gold up. That's an inverse correlation. And gold has been coming in and out of inverse correlations as long as we have charts. It is quite common for it to run on an inverse correlation. But then the correlation breaks down and it goes back from an inverse correlation to a direct correlation, which means as the dollar goes up, gold goes up as well. Um, and that's what that light blue triangle over there is showing you, that on the 24-day chart, um, this market has switched back to direct correlation. In other words, gold goes up, US dollar goes up, gold goes up. Um, and it's breaking that down. However, if you look at a daily chart with these same comparisons in it, you'll see that on the daily time frame, uh, gold and the US dollar are back in their inverse correlation again. Very interesting for you to know these correlations. This is the best known of the correlations, either directly or inverse. I'm going to show you some more so you can think about how you can benefit from this big move down in the US dollar. And the probabilities are that it goes down until it finds support at two standard deviations from the mean. And if that happens, it's got quite a way to fall yet. Uh, and you can see this uh, chart I'm showing you now uh, is uh, the US dollar uh, on top, or at least the US dollar index on top. It's close enough to the index uh, itself. Uh, uh, have a look in the bottom uh, panel. That's US T-bond. Look at this correlation. It's extraordinary, the direct correlation. Highs coming in at very, very much the same places. Uh, and uh, you can see in the top one uh, that uh, the US dollar maintained its rally uh, back in 2016 for quite a while. This 24-day chart, so each one of these bars is just about a, a trading month, 22 uh, trading days in most months. Um, and uh, the dollar managed to go on uh, uh, with its uh, 
strength for well, a long period of time, uh, five, six, seven months uh, after the uh, uh, T-bonds had uh, topped. Uh, and you can see that after it moved on, the same thing, it made its low, uh, the dollar made its low before the T-bonds made its low, up it went and rallied, um, and uh, the rally high came uh, almost exactly the same time on T bond. So this is a high. These are highly, highly correlated markets, and you do well to have this sort of background knowledge about what markets do and their relationship to each other. Uh, this chart, the upper part of this chart here, um, which has the U.S. dollar on it, also has the two standard deviations from the mean that we're looking at. Uh, the dollar's broken its support off one standard deviation from the mean. It fought very hard. This is a 24-day chart. So it fought for three, four months to try and hold that uh, support level. Um, and now that it's failed, it's fighting to get back there. I think the probability is <coughs> it'll find support at two standard deviations from the mean, which means this fall in the US dollars uh, got a way to go yet. Uh, have a look at this. This is the Australian Japanese yen uh, on top. This is a forex pair, Australian dollar Japanese yen. Um, the one on the bottom um, is uh, US T bond. Uh, now, normally that pair has followed um, uh, the uh, price movement of US T bonds, um, and that went on with direct correlation until about. Uh, Mid, uh, mid mid 2016, late 2016. And it then reverted to an inverse correlation. In other words, uh, dollar up, Forex Aussie JPY pair down, and vice versa. So be aware that these, can, these uh, relationships can switch from direct correlation <coughs> to inverse correlation. It's very, very interesting, isn't it? Uh, have a look what's just been happening recently. Huge momentous rally um, in the uh, uh, US, um, uh, in, in the uh, uh, T-bonds, I should say, which we had up until about uh, August last year. We finalized itself with a big spike up. Look what it did to the Aussie-Japanese yen pair. Big spike down. It's worth knowing this stuff, folks. Uh, this is more than coincidental. This is one of the magic moments of how markets work. Uh, moving on, this is the US dollar um, against the Great British Pound. Um, and this works exactly as you would expect. Logically, any of the, uh, uh, any of the Forex pairs, or indeed currency futures, that are linked to the US dollar are going to move inversely to the direct price action of the US dollar. Okay, and that's a big, that's a big start uh, in your knowledge of the longer term basis. Uh, this is going to interest Dean and uh, all of you guys who trade grains. Um, have a look at this. Oh, Chip's arrived. Hello, Chip. Good to have you with us, mate. Let's do a check on a few of the late arrivals here. Uh, good to see you with us, mate. Uh, oh, John from Coffs Harbour. John, I bet it's beautiful down there today, mate. Good to have you with us. Uh, I've said hello to most of these folks already. Yeah, I've got most of you here. Milton, welcome, Milton. Good to have you here. <laughs> John said, a wonderful day. Boy, Coffs Harbour is one of the picture postcard places on the uh, uh, on the east coast of Australia. Marvellous beach. Really nice little harbour there. I spent a lot of time there. Because uh, if you're sailing from Sydney up to the Barrier Reef or the Gold Coast, uh, it's got a great little harbour. You can uh, duck in there if you... Uh, want a bit of a, a rest from it all. Uh, oh boy, we've got a lot of uh, a lot of folks who've arrived today. Good to have you, people. They've got a nice turnout. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so here we go. Keep going. Daryl over in Mossman, maybe no longer in Mossman. He's a Sydney guy. He came here from South Africa. Wonderful guy. Great friend of mine. Love to see you again sometime, Daryl. Take care. Okay, so um, here we are. Uh, this is the US dollar and wheat now. I know a lot of you guys like to trade grains. Have a look at this for some background knowledge. This is a 24-day chart. Grains and the US dollar are inversely correlated. Um, a cheaper um, US dollar creates additional sales 
of grains. Okay. So uh, as the uh, as the U.S. dollar goes down, grain sales tend to go up. And look what's happening now. We've got this long-term trend chart. This is a long-term chart, of course. Uh, weakening off uh, the dollar consider consistently and considerably, look at grain prices, much healthier and could go a whole lot higher, uh, says Dean and all the farmers of the world. What do you think these are high prices? Are you mad, he says? Uh, get it up there, I know. I know, I used to be on the land myself for many, many years, mate, uh, and uh, loved every minute of it and enjoyed it. Okay, here's our next one. Have a look at this one, US dollar and sell soybeans. Like that big rally in soybeans, forty-two thousand dollars per one contract, or some part of that. Uh, look what caused it. Look what the U.S. dollar's done. Dived. Okay. Same thing at, uh, the, with the grains. Uh, lower prices, more opportunity to sell your product because they're more attractively priced to overseas buyers. That's why most governments essentially want to have um, a weaker currency and. Uh, if you, you took a really long-term view of what the US dollar's done, you'd be amazed. Uh, but uh, if you have an export-based uh, market, uh, a lot of uh, is uh, Australia, for example, uh, they always want, the farmers always want cheaper currency, less currency, because as your currency gets cheaper, your export products become more attractive to overseas buyers. Um, but boy, this is dramatic, isn't it? Uh, this has put in a huge spike here, um, and uh, it's really helpful if you know the background of some of these correlations. So, simply because the US dollar is going down doesn't mean uh, that we can only trade uh, that or its derivatives. Uh, but you have these correlations with all these other markets. Have a look at this for a really, really clever chart. This is crude oil against the US dollar. Now, of course. Crude oil is, is quoted in US dollars. That's what the petrodollars have been about for years and years. But there it is. Uh, a whole lot of it uh, inversely related. Dollar down, oil up. Oil up, dollar down. Remember that this is a 24-day chart. All these co co um, correlation charts I'm showing you. Have a look at this also on a daily chart, folks, because it can change. It does can and does change. Uh, this is crude oil against T-bonds, which you might find unusual. But look at these amazing inverse correlations. Uh, they're just just wonderful. Um, they're not exactly month to month. You can see that back in 2016, as I said, um, uh, we were looking at uh, the US dollar. It went uh, its rally a bit longer. Uh, but uh, same thing in T-bonds. Uh, not exactly point to point, but boy, you better know about these correlations to get a feel. Uh, for what the probabilities are, and trading is all about probabilities. Uh, here's copper, which made a wonderful high right at the Daniel Code blue line, 462.50, or very close to it. Uh, our target recognition, folks, uh, for those of you who don't know, we require target recognition against the Daniel Code ratios within 0.1%. Not 1%, 0.1%. Very, very accurate, and markets, in fact, are much more accurate than that. I'm intrigued always, you know, with gold uh, back in the day uh, when its uh, price was a fraction of what it is now. Uh, it was tagging the 0.1%. Interesting. Now, that number's tripled, the, the, the real value of 0.1% in gold. But the variation hasn't. It's still 0.1%. Occasionally, a tick or two past it, that's all. Okay, equities, uh, lots of uh, interest in equities, and uh, it's time we looked at it. Have a look at this. Uh, this is the S&P. This is the uh, mini uh, futures contract on the S&P 500. So you will see that uh, area I've got the uh, circle around. Uh, that runs from uh, February 2020 to March 2020. That's the uh, COVID flash crash, uh, if I can call it that, in February and March 2020. Pretty spectacular. <coughs> it was the uh, fastest bear market, uh, or the shortest bear market, I should say, in history, because the market got down 20%, which defines it as a bear market, um, and then said, Fui turned around and uh, roared back up. Uh, and we had a wonderful trading on that. We got that turn right to the day at the top of this market, and uh, 
uh, I think it was worth about, uh, from memory, uh, 42,000 per one S&P E-mini contract uh, on three uh, Daniel Code trades. Uh, don't quote me, that's my memory, but that's a year ago. In fact, it's more than a year ago, isn't it? But look what's happened since then. Uh, you, same thing you, you've seen on these other charts. This is your Daniel Code trading channel with your one standard, standard, standard deviation, Daniel Code standard deviation from the mean. So this market bounces out of its low in March 2020, um, and the first thing it does is it grabs the mean, um, and it follows that up and follows that up and follows it up. Uh, in uh, late 2020, it breaks below that line, the mean, the thicker line, and it finds support at one standard deviation below the mean. And it holds on to that on a closing basis. You can see plenty of these bars are going to dive through that, but they come back up and it continues to close at or above one standard deviation below the mean until April, maybe April, maybe May this year. Look what's happened now. That support that's held all the way from March 2020 is now becoming resistant. In other words, the s and is below that support level and that's now becoming resistant. Look at all the highs uh, since uh, in, in 2000 and uh, since, well, where would I say, here we are, uh, since about uh, May, June, uh, late May, early June 2021, they're all being stopped at that same line. So what was once support has now become resistance. Okay, and remember this is an angular channel every point on this angle has a function of time and of price. Uh, this is the same chart, but this is a close only chart. It's not plotting the bar high lows, just the close. <coughs> but it's much clearer to you, <coughs> isn't it, in what I'm talking about, that <coughs> on all of these Daniel Code measuring devices like the Daniel Code Trading Channel tool, support has become resistant and resistance can become support. Uh, all more of that sort of uh, background feel <coughs> about what markets are doing. So uh, this is now the dominant, uh, we're, we're back now to a six-day chart. This is the S&P index uh, on the six-day chart. And you can see that 2020, 2000, uh, and uh, I've got 2021 on the hive. That, that's wrong. That's uh, February 2020 down to March 2020. Uh, that's what happens from doing these uh, uh, webinars for you at uh, four o'clock in the morning uh, for sleep. Um, and um, but that pattern there of what I call the COVID crash, the first COVID crash. I'm sure there's going to be more. Uh, is dominating this six-day chart and. Uh, you can see from the high, uh, in it says February 2021, it's actually February 2020, if you'll forgive me. Fifth, the 59 cycle took us out to July 2021. And that's what the fourth seal was partially looking at. So the fourth seal's taken a much more comprehensive view than that. It looked also at 12-day um, charts, 24-day charts, even occasionally 48-day charts. Uh, but... Uh, the simplest uh, form and the, the one we've seen that's most notable to us, uh, because it's within a reasonable uh, memory, uh, was the 2007-2009 um, uh, uh, mortgage securities uh, crash. Uh, and uh, these crash tops, if they're going to come at all, they come at the Daniel Code crash cycle. And the crash cycle is 59 periods, high to high on the first hop. So once it's done its first hop, it goes on doing and half and twice and twice and a half and three times, etc. The actual crash cycle is 59 high to high on the first hop. And that crash cycle expired in July 2021, which is what the fourth seal was looking for. But that's gone. So it's not happened now. Well, this is the same chart, but we've now moved our time, our start of counting time, from the chart high to the closing low. Now, there's two weapons down there. One's the closing low. The next one is the chart low. They're different, but they're both valid to count time cycles from.
and you can see that from the closing low which is usually the dominant cycle the 62 cycle on the S&P has expired the week just passed okay exactly but we didn't get anything on the 59 so this is not the Daniel code crash cycle okay? make sure you understand that folks and this is the Nasdaq this is showing you the same thing the Nasdaq so dominant so strong um, that it's been holding uh, up uh, all these other markets um, we've started the count here to show you from the chart high uh, back in February 2020 and we had I had two numbers I've shown you this chart before they've got red dots on them uh, that each of those six day cycles fell respectively 59 cycle uh, 59 it's not 59 days it's 59 lots of six days each of these bars encompasses six trading days uh, those dots were on when uh, we were expecting a high at the 59 and then the subsequent 62 now that cycle has expired so you have to move <coughs> the timing tool on to the next valid uh, mark from which we can count which is either the swing low or the closing low the Daniel the uh, Nasdaq is a little bit easier uh, for us to follow because you can see that the swing low and the closing low in March 2020 are on the same bar uh, and from that uh, we've got a, a little minor counter trend one period after the 44 high uh, then we got the 59 high which caused a enough of a vibration to give us an outside bar um, and now we're sitting squarely right in the middle of the 62 cycle uh, and uh, markets can turn into other cycles market can turn just as well 62 as anything else but if it turns at 62 which I suspect is what's happening uh, it will not be the crash cycle uh, which has implications about how far and fast all of this is going to happen now uh, to confuse you a little bit more this is the Dow uh, the same thing we're running for the, the Dow from the uh, crash low it's showing March 2021 it was actually March 2020 forgive me uh, and the 59 cycle from that low is has given us the high uh, the chart high and the closing high well the chart high at least the closing high comes one and two bars later but it gives you the chart high but that's not a count high to high which is the crash cycle that's the count high to low or low to high in this case Okay, it's still equally valid uh, but it's unlikely to have all of the connotations uh, of the crash cycle with it so what do these different cycles mean well we know what the 59 high to high cycle means on the first first hop other cycles can certainly turn markets but what we're seeing here at present is different markets turning at different cycles <coughs> and what are the probabilities of that race are we likely to see a fast savage correction or a slow muted correction there's lots of discussion going on about that we'll know as the market unfolds we do not have foreknowledge uh, but we do know that uh, markets react at and only at these Daniel code cycles uh, so remember Nasdaq represents growth Russell represents value you often hear uh, people involved in shares talking about growth versus value etc etc but there's been absolutely no violence in the equity selling to date uh, sometimes that can take a while to develop in uh, 2007 uh, it, it, it took many months to develop and I've, I've shown you those absolute times that they took um, in some recent um, webinars uh, anyway to continue our look through the equities uh, here we are uh, this is the Russell it made its high in March this year 2021 same thing that's the count from the closing low of the crash cycle the swing low would be one bar later and there's uh, the these all of these time cycles are valid for plus or minus one bar uh, so this has come one bar after the 44 <coughs> which is <coughs> the same means it turned out the 44 cycle <coughs> which interesting enough is the primary time cycle for gold although it does work in other markets uh, as well uh, frequently okay um <coughs> couldn't complete a webinar 
uh, without telling you something about gold. Uh, this is the fourth seal on gold. Uh, this uh, trend has been down uh, and we had the uh, big um, uh, final, uh, maybe final, uh, but certainly dramatic crash low uh, on uh, August the 9th. Uh, we got down to uh, our blue line at 16.78. Two days of big selling. The second day, absolutely massive. That really reeks of liquidation. Somebody uh, with a pretty big account uh, has got this all wrong. And uh, that looks to me very much as if that account was being liquidated. You can see that now on the uh, Comex Gold chart. So uh, this market's rallied um, since then, done nothing but rally, observing all the Daniel Code uh, price levels beautifully. Uh, Friday's high uh, was uh, 1833.7. There's the Daniel Code blue line, 1834.6. Nine ticks. Incredible, isn't it? Hmm? Just, just fantastic stuff. Fantastic stuff. Um, and that gave us a, a sell signal, of course, and the market's gone down. It's gone down to the first of the uh, Daniel Code blue lines at 1783.1. How accurate is this stuff? You've had that on your chart for a while. Uh, the low was uh, 1783.1. In other words, zero variation from the first of the Daniel Code blue lines. There are many more, uh, which you can see on members' charts. Uh, but from the uh, fourth seal, we require a close um, above uh, the June high uh, to turn this trend back up. And that uh, close uh, was 1839. Uh, this is the uh, December contract. We require a close above that uh, to uh, prove that this market is out of its downtrend. Um, and uh, on an uptrend. Now remember, trend is always a function of the time you're talking about. Uh, we're looking at a longer a period of time. Uh, we would say that it requests Frank's done from the six-day chart. It needs to close above 1839 to get back into an uptrend. On the daily chart, it's been in an uptrend a long way, and it's simply having a correction um, against the established uptrend on the daily chart. But that's what it needs for gold to go zoom. Uh, and I know a lot of you want that to happen. Okay, uh, what have we got from Greg here? Accurate time sell signal in gold for Tuesday's trading. Yeah, marvellous stuff, huh? <laughs> marvellous stuff, well done, mate. Nice trade there. Uh, some of the currency trades today, the time signals on them, pretty nice, isn't it? Okay, uh, folks, if you haven't already had a free trial, please feel free to do so. Go to uh, the Daniel Code. Uh, just click on the register button. Uh, any issues, uh, contact Terry at support at the .com. If you've had a previous free trial or been a member, the uh, uh, website might be remembering your uh, username, uh, and uh, but Terry can fix that up for you, uh, and uh, you're most welcome to go ahead with that. Uh, this is our disclaimer, folks, which is very important. Uh, I do urge you to read it. I do urge you to pay attention to it. Uh, the risk of lot loss trading commodities or futures can be substantial. It is substantial if you've got it wrong. Uh, and um, uh, I don't want you trading unless you're really confident you know what you're doing. Uh, it's really easy to lose money and it's uh, really um, it's really easy to make money if you know what you're doing, but uh, that's the test. Don't trade real money, please, until you absolutely are confident that you know what you're doing. Okay, question here from Benjamin. Uh, did the ES buy signal from last night get invalidated today? Absolutely. So what happened there, uh, Benjamin, is that we had a buy signal um, in the uh, for the S&P, um, and... Um, uh, we had a buy signal for the S&P uh, and uh, our copper um, and um, a sell signal for the dollar. Uh, so uh, what happened with that uh, uh, buy signal? It was elected um, and then the market reversed and went down and gave you an outside bar. The minute you get to an outside bar on the day of the entry of a new trade, you must, must, must stop and reverse. Uh, and uh, I hope I'm going to have the pleasure of teaching you that uh, when you do your uh, Daniel Code tutorial. Uh, so that's where we are, folks. Again, a special thank you to uh, Greg 
uh, for his generosity in sharing uh, his thoughts and some of his uh, research with us. Absolutely fabulous. Uh, great training and very well done, Greg. Um, and that's us for the day, folks. Uh, this uh, webinar will be uh, posted uh, when Terry uh, gets around to it. Um, uh, if any of your friends have missed it, ask them to uh, read it on the website. Uh, thank you, Murph. Glad you enjoyed it. Um, incidentally, mate, the a new pup's name is uh, Murphy. Uh, I think the RSPCA had it called Cedar or something rather, but uh, Mrs. Needham has named Murphy. Uh, Murphy uh, from Mackay. Uh, there you are. What a great name, isn't it? My uh, grandmother's name. In fact, my mother's name. Uh, Al Survivor Murphy. <laughs> I'll tell you where she was from <laughs> pretty clearly. Okay, thanks, John. Have a great weekend yourself. I'm off the clock now, folks. Uh, so enjoy your weekend. More fabulous trading with the Daniel Code next week. All the best for now. Bye bye. Yes, Greg, keep hunting it, mate. All the best, folks. Bye-bye.